Hey, Sue! Good girl. Good girl. Well, we're here at Swan Lake Iris Gardens to learn about ecosystems with Ranger Ronnie and Sue. You came to the perfect place. Swan Lake is a wetland ecosystem full of different species of plants and animals. And I have the perfect guide for you, Sue. Well, let's go, Sue. Take us on a tour. Ecosystems are complex, interactive systems that include both living components, biotic factors, and physical components, abiotic factors, of the environment. Hey Sue, why don't you show us the first abiotic factor, water. In wetland ecosystems like Swan Lake, rainfall determines whether the ground is dry or whether it is submerged in water. When rain falls in cities, the water flows into storm drains that lead to pipes, ditches, and canals that eventually make their way into ponds, lakes, and wetland areas. Swan Lake is part of a complex wetland ecosystem that leads all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. As water leaves Swan Lake, it flows into Green Swamp, which becomes the Pocataligo River, that flows into the Black River system that eventually merges with the Waccamaw River, which flows into the Atlantic Ocean near Georgetown, South Carolina. The second abiotic factor we'll talk about is sunlight. Because of the big trees in a wetland ecosystem, filtered sunlight and shadows fall on the forest floor. The plant life in wetland ecosystems have evolved to flourish in these conditions. On hot summer days, I know that Sue is happy she can find the cooling shade of trees around Swan Lake. The shade of these trees can significantly lower the temperature, even on the warmest of days. Another abiotic factor affecting wetlands is their soil. As the large trees drop leaves, limbs, or fall over to the floor below, Decomposers break down these items to make rich black soil that provides nutrients for the plants in the area. Good thing that Sue has big webbed feet because without them she would sink in the wet mud. And now we move on to biotic factors, the living components of the ecosystem. Sue, why don't you introduce us to some of your friends here at Swan Lake? Sue is part of the Whooper Swan population at Swan Lake, which is part of the swan community that consists of all eight species of swans, and is part of the wetland community that includes flowering and non-flowering plants, insects, reptiles, birds, and mammals. There are three main types of living things in an ecosystem. The first, a producer, like this holly, wax myrtle, and oak that all make their own food from photosynthesis. Without these producers, none of the animals at Swan Lake would be able to survive. This is because all animals are consumers and need to consume or eat their food. Consumers, like this black-necked swan that is feeding on underwater vegetation, or this great blue heron, and these cormorants, which are in search of fish to consume to give them the energy that they need. Decomposers, like these shelf fungus, consume dead plants and break them down into nutrients for the soil that are used by producers like plants to grow and start the cycle all over again. There are many insects in a wetland ecosystem as well. They are consumers that feed off of the plant material, but they also help the plant materials through pollinating of flowering plants. Okay, Sue, now that we've met some of your feathered friends, can you show us some of the other animals that live in a wetland ecosystem?
this is a great spot, Sue. With this stream running through here and all these game trails, I think this would be an excellent spot to put a game camera to see what animals are using this wildlife corridor. When we checked the camera, sure enough, we got some great pictures of animals, most of which are nocturnal, meaning they are more active at night. Look, this is a really nice buck, which is a male deer, along with several does, which are the females. Oh, this one here, she wanted to get a close-up for the camera. We even got some pictures of some raccoons. This one is climbing the fence to get in to see all of his friends in Swan Lake. Here are a couple of gray foxes. They are omnivores, which means they eat both plants and animals. Wetland ecosystems are perfect habitats for them because there is no shortage of things for them to eat. Coyotes are one of the most tolerant animals when it comes to the sharing of their space with humans. They are able to find their niche in almost any habitat because of their ability to adjust rapidly to changes in their environment. Bobcats' ecological niche is predatory in nature, being that they help control many small mammal and bird populations. Okay, Sue, what is another part of an ecosystem that we need to see? You're right! The underwater world is vital to the health of any ecosystem. We are not only talking about species like fish and turtles, which play important roles in the wetland, but also the microscopic species that are the basis of all life in an ecosystem. The major role that swans play in the environment is that they assist the flow of nutrients and oxygen through the ecosystem. Often, swans like Sue will uproot more plants than they can actually eat. This submerged vegetation plays an important role in the aquatic ecosystem by providing food and cover to a variety of vertebrate and invertebrate species. In turn, species like fish rely on these underwater animals for food. Now these organisms are so small we cannot see them with our eyes, so we're going to need to get the help of Dr. Dan and his students from USC Sumter. First, they will collect water samples. Then, using microscopes, they will identify the species that are present in Swan Lake. Plankton are an important food source for organisms in an aquatic environment. Animals rely on aquatic food sources such as algae to support the food chain. Zooplankton are animal-like plankton, which eat phytoplankton and are usually found in deeper water or bottom areas of a pond or lake. Well, I guess that's Sue's way of telling us our tour has come to an end. Thanks, Sue, for all the good information you shared with us today. Now tell everyone bye, and you will see them next time they visit Swan Lake, Iris Gardens, and Arboretum. All of us here at the City of Sumter hope that you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in more information about Swan Lake Iris Gardens, please feel free to contact us at 803-436-2640 or via email at tourism at sumtersc.gov.